Am I on? Here, now I'm on. Good morning again um, on this somewhat rainy day. Uh, but I have my Jesus sandals on. I am ready for our barbecue at 1130. We are going to barbecue whether uh, it's raining or not. And, you know, I had been wondering how in the world we were going to grill all those hamburgers and get them all set um, at one time. And then I got to church today and saw the Hartwigs grill out there. And now I understand how, right? <laughs> like that is no little grill. So we're all set for barbecue. I hope you guys will come back at 1130 for that. Um, even if it's raining, then we're going to be inside and we'll social distance and we'll have some fun anyway. So just a reminder about that. And Lisa's going to do announcements and she'll give you more details a little bit later. So um, good morning. If you are joining us also on Facebook, I'm glad that you can be with us and share in our community here. And also if you are joining us over Chasm Radio. Um, and this morning, Barb and Peter Fisher are our sponsors on Chasm. So a, a big thank you to Barb and Peter Fisher for sponsoring us today. And if anybody else um, is interested in sponsoring us, just call the church office for more information. Um, we're grateful for that. It's been a fun and wonderful new ministry for this congregation to, to be able to extend the gospel um, beyond these walls. So um, thank you to our sponsors. Well, how about if we all stand as we are able this morning, and um, why don't you say hello to the people sitting around you, greet your neighbors in a socially distanced way. Yeah. And then we'd like to turn around and face that camera with the pink stuffed animal on top of it. Those are our, our Facebook camera. Yeah, good morning to our Facebook friends. All right, it's fun to be able to see people when you're watching on Facebook. And then we are going to begin with that opening... Um, Litany. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Let's sing together. Continue now with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll continue with some singing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And Diana is bringing us our... Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to be here. I need to sit. That was a lot of standing for me. All right. So I first wanted to say off, start off by um, congratulating a few of our um, bigger children. So uh, congratulations to Angela Mergen, who placed at the state speech um, competition. So that's awesome, the Minnesota State Speech Competition. <laughs> And for those of you that don't know, this weekend is the Albany High School musical. And um, I'm probably going to miss a few friends here, but um, I want to shout out, especially to our seniors, Alex, Gina, Aaron, and Bobby Joe, on a great job that they did at the musical. Um, we have a whole pile of other friends that are in the musical as well. Um, Cassidy and Kayla, Nira, Hope, Faith, Elsie, um, Myra, she is actually the um, student director, so that's pretty cool. And then our uh, church secretary, Angie, her, her son, Oliver, is also in the, in the musical. So um, if you haven't seen it yet, um, I don't know if there's tickets or not available. But it's an awesome show, and they did a great job. Let's just congratulate them as well. Yeah, they live streamed. Yeah, they live streamed last night and the night before. I don't think they do. They live stream today. I'm not. Do you know? They do today at two. Yeah, there is a link, and I will share it straight to our Facebook page right after this. Is that cool? Check it out. Um, they, it's an awesome, awesome production, as it is always with um, the Albany High School um, plays and theaters and their fine arts. It's just awesome, and we are so blessed to have so many of our young children participate in that. So. And I apologize if I missed somebody. I always usually do. So um, you are loved more than you know. So, <coughs> um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about love. Um, for those 50 days after Easter, especially this year, we talk a lot about love and what love means and God's love. And today we're going to hear about abiding in love and what does that all mean? Well, first... I want to talk to you a little bit about love. And so sometimes when we think about love, the first thing we think about is, is like romantic love. So chocolates and flowers and candies and candlelight dinners. And yeah, that, that, is a, that is a form of love. But then we can talk about the love between family, that <coughs> connection and that love made through um, shared experiences and memories and connection. Um, and then there is a love between friends of of caring for each other and laughter and um, enjoying each other's time. Then there's love for neighbor. That's making our community better for those that are around us and so that we love those. Then there's love of God, the unending, unfailing, everlasting love of God. I want to ask you guys a few more questions, and we'll raise our hands as we participate. So those of you that have um, lived in the Albany area your entire lives, go ahead, raise your hand. There's a few of you. Yep, there's a pile of you. C keep raising your hands, okay? We're going to keep raising them. Those of you that have um, either moved or are from the Stearns County area, raise your hand. That's me, Stearns County, born and raised. Yep. Those of you that have lived or moved from greater Minnesota, keep raise your hands. Everybody should keep raising your hands over here. Those of you that were born or lived and moved here from other parts of the United States, raise your hand. <laughs> At this point, we should have a lot of hands. And then those of you that were born and raised and then now moved or lived or are visiting from the entire world, raise your hand. Yeah, everybody's hand should be up at this point, right? We hit them all, unless you're from Mars, which... Yeah, all of us. So, all of you that have raised your hands, 
We are neighbors because we are on this earth together. We are here together. We are children of God together. And when we're going through that phase of love from romantic love and neighbors and, or from family to friends and neighbors to God, what's awesome is that God, Jesus himself, said, love God, love your neighbor. Those two things. And if we remember that we are all here together on this earth and we are neighbors together and we share that love with each other, I, because Jesus said so, I think we can do awesome things because love God, love your neighbor. What else is there? Right? Right. All right. I know we're going to hear a whole bunch more about love today, but I'm so glad to be able to share this time with you guys. Thank you. Please read responsibly in the bold print. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The reading is from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have been may have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is so we are in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love we love because he first loved us those who say i love god and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The command we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Holy 
gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And uh, Diana took a couple days off this week, so we are not having joyful noise this week, but we'll return to that next week, so skip right past that slide. Well, God's beloved people, grace to you and peace from God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So when I first read this wonderful gospel text for today, um, a text that I've always loved, and I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about this morning, I drew a total blank. Like my mind just, uh, nothing came to my mind, which was so strange because it's such a beautiful text. So I set it aside for a little while and I said, well, God, you're just going to have to bring me what you want me to talk about um, in your own time, in your own way, which God does. Well, about an hour later, I, um, I was doing my yoga for the day when out of the clear blue sky, a picture dropped into my mind. And I'm really not a visual person very much, so this was unusual. It was strange. And the picture that dropped into my mind was a picture of the choir singing last Sunday. And I could see each person's face so clearly. I could see where each person was standing. I could see what their expression was. I could almost see the faith in each person's eyes. And I could hear the beauty and the truth of the words they were singing. Be not afraid. I go before you always. And what God seemed to be saying to me in this picture is that even in the midst of these strange and unprecedented times, when we don't really know what the future will be and all of our normal sort of structures of life have fallen away, even so there is this vine that holds us to himself and holds us to each other and this life that lives in us and bursts forth from us and bears much fruit. And as long as we are abiding in this vine, we'll be just fine. And I thought about when John wrote his gospel, which was around the year 100 AD, and he was writing to this small little group of Christians in the city of Ephesus, and their world had really been blown apart. Most of them were Jews, and they were being kicked out of their synagogues, uh, these places which they had grown up in, the communities that had known them and been a part of their lives, all of their lives. Not only this, they, they weren't just losing their community, but they were losing their livelihood because no one would support their businesses or hire them anymore because they were Christians. So all they really had was each other and their faith in the living Christ. Their future was completely up in the air, and yet they had this vine who was holding them to himself and to each other. I am the vine, said Jesus, recalling them back to the great I am of their own Hebrew scriptures. I am who I am, God said to Moses when Moses asked God his name. I am the vine, said Jesus. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. I always think of our graduates this time of year and, and how they're making plans for their lives and wondering what their future will be like. And we so often think about our, our plans, don't we, and what we want to do with our lives. But if we submit those plans to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? His plans for us are always better than our plans for us because if we are abiding in the vine, then we'll bear so much fruit. And because whatever God calls us to do, God will empower us to do. He'll never call you to anything that he doesn't equip and supply you. So Jesus said, if you abide in me, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. I have never found this not to be true. 
I heard a story the other day about a woman who God called to work with the homeless in Chicago. And she was with a couple of little boys whose family had absolutely nothing. And these two little guys wanted to go to McDonald's because they wanted uh, the toys that are in the Happy Meal. And they knew that there were Transformers in the Happy Meals at that time. But there wasn't time and there wasn't a McDonald's nearby and so she had to say no. But she said, you can pray and ask God. Well, later that day, she, she got on the bus with them to go back to the homeless shelter. And, and when they arrived, there was a woman standing there holding this casserole and, uh, and a cloth bag. And she said, you know, I was scheduled to bring a meal to the shelter tonight. But just as I was leaving my house, she said, I felt this nudge to go back and get this bag. I have no idea why, she said, handing it to the worker. It's been sitting in my house for years. So she hands the bag to this worker. And when the worker opened it up, it was filled with transformers. Yeah. See, we have a living God who provides for his people. Christ never sends us without empowering us so that we can bear fruit and glorify God. There's a wonderful story um, that's told about the great British preacher, Charles Mueller, who was crossing the Atlantic Ocean to go to this preaching engagement he had in Quebec. And the captain of this huge steamship that he was traveling on wrote this story about him. He said, we had a man of God on board, George Mueller of Bristol. There was a thick fog, he wrote, and I had been on that bridge for 22 hours and never left it. I was startled by someone tapping me on the shoulder. It was George Mueller. Captain, he said, I have come to tell you that I must be in Quebec on Saturday afternoon. This was Wednesday. It is impossible, I said to him. Very well, he said. If your ship can't take me, God will find some other means of locomotion to take me. Well, I have never broken an engagement in 57 years, I said. I would gladly and willingly help you, but how can I? I'm helpless. The fog is too thick. Let us go down to the chart room and pray, he said. I looked at this man and I thought to myself, what, a, what lunatic asylum could this man have come from? I have never heard of such a thing. Mr. Mueller, I said, do you know how dense this fog is? No, he replied. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. He went down on his knees and he prayed one of the most simple prayers. I thought to myself, that would suit a children's class where the children were not more than eight or nine years old. The burden of this prayer was something like this. Oh Lord, if it is consistent with thy will, please remove this fog in five minutes. You know the engagement you have made for me in Quebec for Saturday. I believe it is your will. When he had finished, I was going to pray, but he put his hand on my shoulder and told me not to pray. First, he said, you do not believe God will do it. And second, I believe God has already done it, and there is no need whatsoever for you to pray about it. I looked at him, and George Mueller said this, Captain, I have known my Lord for 57 years, and there has never been a single day that I have failed to gain an audience with the king. Get up, Captain, and open the door, and you will find that the fog is gone. I got up, he wrote, and the fog was gone. And on Saturday afternoon, George Mueller was in Quebec. Friends, we have a God who listens to us and hears our prayers and who empowers the plans that he has for us. If you abide in me, ask for whatever you wish, he said, and it will be done for you. We have so much uncertainty about our own future right now, don't we? What will the church even look like post-pandemic? Post will we ever get people back in our pews? Will we ever be able to take these masks off? Will giving, will our offering come back up again? Will the young people come back to church? What will it be like this time next year? We really don't know yet, do we? But God does know. And God has plans for us and for God's church. He's carefully tending his vineyard. He's pruning what isn't needed anymore. And he's bringing fruitfulness where we can't even see or imagine yet. And so in the meantime, what do we do? Well, the answer is right here. We abide. And we cling to this vine who is our life and who is our supply. And we sing, and we pray, and we worship, and we serve, and we care for our neighbor, and we care for the world that God so loves. And we trust that in all things, and in every way, miraculously sometimes, 
the vine grower, grower will take care of the rest. Amen. We confess together our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, stand as you are able for our prayers. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Lord, in your mercy... You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy, you rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy, you have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, 
outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. Today we pray especially for Greg, Jane, Diane, Chad, Lucille, Betty, Laura, Floyd, Shirley, Sue, Baby Emmett, Brian, Marlo, Chad, Shirley T, Marguerite, and Marion. Lord, in your mercy, you gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. With them may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Lord, in your mercy, in the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of peace with those around you. And yes, we turn around and we share our peace with our friends on Facebook as well. <laughs> All right, um, you may be, no, see, yeah, you may be seated. You may be seated. You don't need my permission ever to sit, by the way. So um, we remember now our offerings uh, and in your generosity, we can um, send your offering through a variety of different ways. Um, through the snail mail by one. Um, you can enroll in giving at our website and you can give online. We also have a Give Plus app that you can check out. Those directions are also on our website. If you have your offering with today, you can leave it in the basket in the back. All right, we sing now together our offering song. Now we will have you stand as you're able, but as you're able, so if you have you know, health concerns and it's hard to stand, then always know that you can remain seated. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he offered it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and to forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now if you can take your little communion kit out. 
And if it's easier to open it sitting down, then feel free to do that either way. We'll take that wafer out first, the top layer. And this is the body of Christ that's given for you. And then peel back that second layer. And this is the blood of Christ that's shed for you. And we sing together now, just as I am. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. And why don't you join me in this prayer? Wellspring of joy, through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May our great, glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. And now I'm going to have Lisa come up and share just a couple quick announcements with us so you can be seated for that. Good morning. Today is our Reconnect barbecue at 1130. Everyone is welcome to come. It's free and you don't have to bring anything but yourself. The Hartwigs are grilling up burgers for us. Diana has put together kids games and activities. We brought the salads, cookies and chips. This will be a great way to get together after the long COVID winter. So please come. If it's raining out, we will socially distance and move it inside. Second, mark your calendars for May 23rd, which will be Graduate Sunday. We will celebrate and honor our graduating seniors on that day at both services. Finally, next Saturday from noon to two will be another free food distribution through Farmers to Families right here in our parking lot. People will receive a 30 pound box of produce, dairy and meat. If you'd like to volunteer at this event, please contact Sally Sands. Thank you to everyone who helped with worship today. Keisha Maida on music, reader Jolene Lobitz, sound and video Lisa and Kevin Boyning, assisting minister and children's sermon, Diana Brown. That's it for the announcements. Let us join in our sending song, Shout to the Lord. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Christ is risen in Christ is risen in peace. <laughs> Go in peace, share the good news.